folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and welcome to another session of 10 Minutes with an RV Tech with Darren. Yay! Uh, I need to get some Muppets that'll dance around for us. Like the Swedish chef, he was always my favorite. Bork, bork, bork. Um, so basically what this session's all about, what this whole series is all about, is we get questions coming in from all over the place. And instead of me sitting there answering that one question for that one person, we figured as a team back here behind me, hey, let's just pull them together, throw them in a fishbowl, and we'll just kind of answer them online here where everybody can benefit from the questions and the answers. So it's like a little collective, a little, little, little knowledge base that we can all borrow from and, and use. Um, I don't know all the answers. I never claimed to know all the answers, but the only thing is I've worked on thousands of RVs and um, I've been to the circus and I've seen the sideshow. Um, so with that, let's jump right into the uh, question. So uh, Clyde's got a question. Now Clyde, uh, he's got a Norco 1200 and um, he, let's see here. My Norco 1200 model, when you close the refrigerator doors, the open door chimes, even though they're closed and sealed. Is there a way to turn this off with the buttons? Um, okay, so my first question, Clyde, when that is happening on that refrigerator, and that's a Norco 1200, so they have a couple different types of uh, panels on the eyebrow boards is what they call them, upper control boards, eyebrow boards, whatever. Um, and um, do you have any kind of an error code on there? Usually when the door is open, you're gonna see a DR code on that display. So when it's chiming, I'm curious if you've got a code. That's my first question. Uh, to diagnose the problem, uh, what I'd have you do is open up your doors and your light should be on inside there. Now make sure that the connection is going to be up above by the light. Make sure that the connection is tight. Uh, that on that Norco, that's where your light's going to come in and those little pins always break um, for your little light bulb and um, the thermistor is going to be plugged in at that point too. So make sure that your light's connected good. Make sure your thermistor is connected good. So make sure all your connections are good up in the light area. But with the door open, your light should be on. And then I want you to hit those two little uh, switches, like simulating the door being closed. And I want to see if the, um, it's springtime and my nose itches. I want to see if the light turns off, okay? So if you hit those two switches and the light turns off, then that is good news because that tells you that the switches are working, that the, the control board sees the switches are working, that there's no problem with your switches, no problem with the wiring communicating the switches to the control board. So that's a good news thing. Now, I'm going to suspect, oh, wait, and so if that is the case, then when you close your doors, even though I, I read in here that you said that the doors were closed and sealed, there may, the door, when the door closes, it's not making contact with the switch. Do, does that make sense? So if, if you manually close the switches and the light turns off, that's, that's a good go. That's a, that's a good test. But if you close a door and it's chiming, are you getting a DR issue? And, and then is there any way to put the little man inside the refrigerator to see if the light turns on and off? So... But let's take the other path. Let's say that uh, you open up the doors, the light turns on, and you flip your switches and the light doesn't turn off. Then that's an indication that the switches are bad, that the wiring connecting the switches to the control board is bad, or maybe there's even a problem with the um, uh, control board. Sorry, I'm really itchy. Ah, need to take an allergy pill. Um, and if that's the case, we need to figure out, okay, is a problem with the switch, is a problem with the wiring, is a problem with the control board. And um, so your specific question is, is there a way to turn this off with the buttons? Um, yeah, you can, you can hotwire your switch to make it think that the door's always closed, but then you would never have a light. So um, anyway, you need more troubleshooting. But anyway, that would be the quick thing. Hit your little flippy things and see if the light turns off. Okay, moving on. Um, next question's from Dan. Hi, Dan. Um, have you ever worked on a Lippert bed tilt motor and controller? Uh, I'm trying to figure out if my motor is bad or if the controller is bad. So I'm familiar with those systems. Ah, ah, I'm familiar with those systems. If you have springtime allergies, feel you know, just send me some love. I'm sorry. Um, but if um, so, this is those Lippert control things where the bed will tilt up. We see them a lot on Winnebago's and things like that, where the bed will need to be tilted up in order for the slide room to come in and all this kind of stuff. But I'm not sure what kind of RV you have, but we see them a lot of those. So yes, I have worked on those. Now, the thing with those Lippert controllers is they're wonderful. They, they basically troubleshoot themselves. Uh, you're gonna have two little LEDs on those controllers, a green light and a red light. And um, so when you flip your switch, identify that controller, which I think you have. Um, when you flip your switch, you should see one of the lights turn on. I believe it's the red light LED. So if you flip your switch, verify that the light's turning on. Um, now, 
if the light is turning on and nothing's happening, now you're gonna need your meter, okay? So the first thing I need you to do is I like to verify and prove that there is 12 volts feeding that module. Not 10, not nine, not eight, but pure 12 volts feeding that module. Um, you might get 13, but greater than 10 volts, 11, 12, 13, right up in there is fine. So is 12 volts feeding the module? Flip your switch. If you have an LED light that lights up, coinciding with you flipping the switch, great. That means that your switch circuit is good. But if you're flipping the switch and you're not seeing any lights change, then you have a problem with the wiring from the module to the switch or you have a problem with a switch, okay? So flipping that switch should make that light light up, that little LED on the, on the little board and the little window there. Then um, if you flip the switch and you have 12 volts fitting the circuit, take your meter, you should get 12 volts coming out of that module, okay? So 12 volts coming in, flip the switch, light turns on, 12 volts leaving the module. That will prove your switch circuit's good. That will prove the module's good, okay? If you want to test if it's the bed, we're still not at the motor yet because let's say that 12 volts is leaving the control board. Uh, if 12 volts is leaving the control board, you still have a wire that's connected from the control board to the motor and then you have the motor itself. Um, so you see me in all my videos, I like to take my little 12 volt drill uh, I use 12 volt tools. It wouldn't work in a carpentry setting, but for me, I'm using screws all the time. So it's great to have my 12 volt tools. And um, I take the battery pack off and um, that's where I get my 12 volt source. So unplug the bed motor. So now I have the wire in my hand and I'm gonna go to the bed motor. And I use a 10 foot test lead. You've seen it in some of my videos. Uh, you're gonna take that and you're gonna take your test lead. You're gonna put 12 volts into the red and black wire. Now that wire harness is gonna have a whole bunch of colors in it, but you want the red and black one. Okay. The other ones have to do with the shaft encoder, uh, the, 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 the proc sensor, the Hall effect sensor on it feeding back into the board. But you want the red and black wires in that harness, put 12 volts on those two wires, <clears throat> the motor should move. Um, if it doesn't, then, uh, then it's either the wire or it's a motor and then you move yourself to the motor and test the motor that way. Or you could use your meter to ring out the red and black through the wire. Wow, I hope I answered your question, but that would be how I would troubleshoot that whole process of is it the switch, is it the control module, is it the 12 volts, is it the wiring, is it the bed motor? And so by following that procedure, you should be able to get to the bottom of it. Okay, um, moving on. Um, so uh, Donald's got a question, and this will be my last one because I got two minutes left. Uh, so Donald's got a question. Uh, he watched my video on how to align your trailer with the Lippert Correct Track system. And um, so he's got a question. Um, he said, I remember a guy that built trailers and he deliberately cocked the axle a small amount to compensate for the crown in the road. Uh, and then he, he asked, I wonder if you can move the axle on the spring. And so Donald, my question to the gentleman that's making the trailers and cocking the axles is how can you guarantee that there is a crown in the road? Um, if you're on the interstate and you're in the left lane or the right lane, the crowd's opposite, okay? Um, and then you get on the farm roads, there is no crowns. And so um, I, I, I'm sure he, must, he does a very good job making trailers, but I'm not so sure that the logic is sound in, in doing that. So he's probably made thousands and thousands of trailers and he'll tell me to go pound sand because I don't know what I'm talking about. But here's what I will say on, on the whole uh, axle thing. Um, you really need to align your axles when your trailer is in its carry mode. Okay, now I'm not talking about dump trucks and things. I'm, I'm an RV tech, I work on RVs, so this whole channel is about RVs. So I'm talking about RVs and lining the axles to the RVs. Will this apply to everything else? Absolutely, but I'm talking about RVs. So when you go get your RV weighed and all this kind of stuff, what I'm asking you to do to align your axle, to align your trailer, to do it correctly, to do it the correct track way, to do it the right way, is put everything in your RV, slide rooms in, the, the barbecue grill, the, 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 the can of beans, the case of beer, all that kind of stuff. Put that in the RV as you're gonna be going down the road. Okay, that's the important piece. You don't level, you don't align your axles when it's sitting out and all the, all the slide rooms are out. You level it as if it's going down the road because that's where it matters. Otherwise it doesn't matter. It's sitting somewhere in the yard. So what's the configuration of that RV when it's traveling down the road? So you put all your stuff in it that you're gonna go camping with. And at that point, you, you drive forward a, a little bit, okay? And you, you drop your trailer at that point, don't interface the axles, don't interfere with the axles. And that's when you drop your plumb bobs, make marks on the ground, so I'll start measuring things out. Um, it, because it needs to be the loaded weight because you might have more beans and more beer on one side and um, maybe stuffed animals on the other side. So that spring is gonna elongate on the left side. Now, when they leave the factory, they're all squared up and true, but um, 
when you get it home and you start loading it on, that's that's when you need to align the axle. So it really doesn't have anything to do with crowning of the road. Um, now, as far as your other part of the question um, about moving the spring, normally they have mechanical indexes that are in the perch that the spring sits on or in the spring itself that forces that spring to stay in that position so that it's it's all aligned correctly. So unless you start slicing and dicing and things on the spring and the little perch that it fits on, I wouldn't mess with that. So there's that question. And oh, it look, looks like I went over a little bit. So, hey guys, if this was helpful, give us a thumb up. Subscribe to our channel if you like these types of things. You'll get notification where more of these videos come out. We still have plenty more of the repair walkthrough videos coming through to you guys. So um, share it, subscribe it. Check out our Patreon channel. We're asking folks to head there and, and help support our, our efforts in making these uh, resources available to everybody. And uh, so this is Darren from Port Angeles, Washington, signing off until the next video.